pleased to be here and privileged to have this opportunity uh, to give a speech today. And uh, I was supposed to use PPT today, but it seems turned off. Uh, all this happened you know, at the presentation, even giving an exam. So, well, today I'm going to talk about my topic is 10 values. And I think many of you have thought, you know, 10 values might be related to time management. It could be very boring because everyone has their own philosophy on time management. But today I'm going to talk about more on the time value of money. Time value of money in terms of the resources economy. If you look at the time value of money, uh, well, basically what time value of money tells in economy and finance is as the time passes, the value of the money depreciates. Basically, the value of the money will be worthless. So let's keep that in mind uh, throughout my presentation. So if you look at the graph, uh, what it says is basically the money today will worth less tomorrow and so on. So there are many reasons why money worth less. The first one is macroeconomic reason, inflation, interest rates. And second one is opportunity cost. If you have chosen one project, one, one project or one investment opportunities, and if you have kept your money, basically you're not use, utilizing your money to make money. So considering this, basically the value of the money depreciates. So what's the resource economy? So overall, resource economy has played a very important role throughout the history of the world. So many countries with their resources was one of the prominent countries in the back in histories, but now it has changed a little bit. But still, the resource economy plays a very important role. And in many, many countries, African countries, Asian countries, resources is, uh, is one of the important uh, GDP factor, gross domestic product at the World Bank and international organizations, and they have to figure out how to reduce this. And Mongolia is one of the countries also trying to find their ways to develop. So I think resources economy is, is also very important for overall globe to find the solution to the poverty. So in case of Mongolia, if you see, Mongolia has been you know, uh, known as one of the resource rich countries. And their economy has been growing so fast in the past 10 years, over 15% GDP. And then suddenly, economic downturn happened. And now it's even minus. So what to do with it? And everyone expected that you know, this kind of res abundant resources will have positive impact on the economy of the countries. A similar thing happens to many, many countries in different regions of the world. And even if you look at the currency foreign exchange rate, it's even minus now. So what this to do with the uh, uh, overall, how it's affecting the market, I mean, country's economy is actually lack of diversity. And it's less productivity. And because the economy is itself is focusing on the only few items of items and focusing on few industries. So this is also known as the Dutch disease phenomenon. So what's Dutch disease phenomenon? Next question. So, Dutch disease is basically the one economy is highly dependent on the one sector. And that means the economy is less sustainable over the period. So if you look at on the, uh, the graph, the country is producing the certain natural resources and they, are, they will be exporting, they will be making cash. Of course, they will earn a lot in the short run, but the problem is they will spend a lot because they have to import from the other countries and they are focusing on the very few industries. So when this happened, basically the exchange rate of the market, exchange rate of the country will depreciate, which means that they have, they have less buying power. And second one is the increasing in the spending of the country. So that means net export deficit. So there was a case in the United States of America, the several economists has looked at how resource economy affects the country. 
and they looked at the sum of the states in the United States, resources rich county and non-resources county. And what they found was they were, they were looking at the three parameters. First one is that in short term, how they grow. And second one is the productivity in the long run. And third one is human capital. How this resource economy affects the improvement and education of the people. So it's surprising that the resource economy is in the long, short run, they showed very high growth. But on the other hand, non-resource county was actually showing less economic growth in the short term. But in the long run, productivity of the non-resource-rich uh, county was actually less. And, but in, on the other hand, non-resources county was higher. And because people are just focusing on very few industries, so they don't, they, they, they don't have any incentive to move on to different industries. And they're just focusing on few industries, but non-resource industries, they have to find their ways to, to sustain the economic growth. So they have to develop engineering fields, different, different fields to sustain the economy. So we look, I looked at the different countries, oil-rich countries and coal-rich countries. Both of them are resource-abundant countries. But then if you look at the GDPs and so on, there is a huge difference as well. And one of the underlying factors is actually the value add. How much value is added to the economy? So if you look at the oil producing countries, oil itself has actually can be transferred, in, transferred into more than 2,000 types of products. But on the other hand, coal rich economy is only, they can produce less than 10 products. And oil, well, energy resources, it can be plastic, where we're using the right now the handphones and so on. And it also goes, goes as a raw product for the medicines as well. In case of the coal, basically power plant, electricity, and industrial plants like steel plants. And second one is human resources. Oil rich economy, they have to, they have to diversify the skilled employees to accommodate these different types of the uh, products. So they need different types of engineers. But in case of the cold beach economy, less skilled in, 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 in manpower because they need only engineers specifically for these industries. So basically a single source of uh, resources like gold, diamond, and coal, these kind of things doesn't really help a lot in the long run because it really doesn't really improve the, the manpower skills. So in case of Volcano, we have two projects uh, which are really huge. And one of them is actually the copper gold mine. The other one is the large cocking coal. We'll have over 15% GDP growth for the like next 50 years. And, this, and also they say reserve of the resources will be more than 500 billion US dollars. And similar thing happens to many, many countries like Indonesia, Vietnam, and so on. And, but why they are not developing so fast? The question. And how we can resolve this? And we need to understand the difference between different types of resources, early mentioned. And that's something related with the time value of the money. Because resources, in order to extract the resource from the land, we need time. And we need very long time. 50 years, 30 years, even longer. And this effect, this is because the future, future, future money doesn't really worth as of today. So resources is very long to capitalize. And second one is, each year they, there is a limitation of extracting the resources from the land. So that, so given that in case of the 500 billion, it will be just 20 billion each year. So this doesn't really impact on the economy so much. And also, because they believe that the resource economy is a very important factor, factor, they just focus on the resources and they don't really focus on developing their different sectors. And manpower-wise, students and the parents, they think you know this is the prospective industry. 
and they just keep focusing on these industries and let the kids to study this kind of subject. So high is expectation, but in the reality, it's less impact on the economy. Next question. So in globalization term, what can we do with this resources dilemma and anomaly? There are two things we have to consider. First one is time value is very important factor as I mentioned. So they have to use their all the resources to extract the resource as soon as possible. They don't have to plan for a long time. And second one is globalization is very important factor because right now Unlike ancient time, 20, 30 years, they don't have to really focus on just one industry. They, they have to earn fast, and they have to move to the global market. What I mean by moving to global market is, if the country has the funds that can invest into the different sectors, startups, the companies like uh, big, big companies like uh, you know newly started companies, biotech companies. IT companies, they can be ownership and they can get a lot more from there. So what, what I'm suggesting is optimize the time, increase the productivity. Thank you.